Hello everyone, my name is Deepa Vishwanathan. I'm from the Department of Languages and Linguistics, University of Tunku Abdul Rahman, Kampar Perak Campus. The topic of my presentation today will be default strategy used by broca aphasic patient during a sentence comprehension. Broca aphasia or a grammatic aphasia is known as one of the language disorders that these individuals actually with this disorder will have difficulties understanding complex sentences. Their speech will be very slow and non-fluent and their responses basically would make sense but ungrammatical. Their reputation to a certain extent that has got to do with uh, repeating a word or phrases or sentences will be basically very poor. Paul Prayer Boca is one of the neuro neurologists who found in his patient's brain that it was damaged and there was a lesion actually in the patient's brain. So it is because, uh, you know, the lesion and the damage actually to a certain extent has affected the patient's ability to produce speech fluently. Broca aphasia can also be considered as a uh, language disorder, which will eventually affect an individual's ability to express themselves uh, you know, and at the same time, they will basically suffer to go about making their points clear. It is because of the ungrammatical sentence structures that could possibly make them not to be able to use uh, word choices, uh, various uh, variety of word choices, and also uh, the omission of functional categories that is basically uh, is very much important in sentence structures. A grammatical facial's most important characteristics would be an effortful telegraphic speech or reduced in length. They will take time to go about uh, expressing their thoughts and they will have very severe uh, problem uh, or severe problem in identifying words you know, during the utterances. And of course, they will go about omitting functional categories, which is basically a very important element that need to be included in constructing sentences. So the main theoretical foundation of this study would be trace deletion hypothesis and default strategy, uh, which these two are the independent claims from uh, the trace based account proposed by Grotzinki in 1995. So the focus of this uh, study would be merely on the investigating uh, whether or not this particular patient that I'd be looking at uh, basically corresponds to one of the claims made by Grotzinki, which Basically, he mentioned that agramatic patients are basically considered as good comprehender of active sentences and also bad comprehender of passive sentences. So to investigate this, I will basically using Chris Tenson's sentence to picture matching test, which is a comprehension test where I will be looking at to what extent they could possibly understand the sentences of active and passive. And then at the same time, to also investigate whether or not they have been using the default strategy during their sentence comprehension. So this will basically uh, be related to the analysis of how the uh, sentence comprehension basically uh, would really be, uh, be done during the process. So the research objectives of this study would be to identify the percentage obtained by the broca aphasic patient in sentence to picture matching tests for the comprehension of active and passive sentences. So this is where I will be basically be using the SPMT test to investigate the number of correctly identified uh, pictures and then uh, with reference to the sentences presented to the patient. And also the second research objective of this study will be to investigate whether the broca aphasic patient in this study used the default strategy during the sentence comprehension of active sentences and passive sentences. So the analysis of the so-called data would be mainly on uh, the syntactic structure of the so-called sentences where I'll be basically using the trace deletion hypothesis and Chomsky's 1981 uh, theta criterion uh, theory to go about explaining how the uh, usage of default strategy could possibly happen during the process. So this will be the conceptual framework of the study. So it all begins with the aim of having to go about looking at their comprehensibility. So the three major issues that basically that, uh, uh, that uh, encouraged me to go about looking into this uh, broca aphasic patient would be the damage in Broca's area to look at to what extent the uh, damage actually 
has ex basically influenced a patient's ability or that particular individual's ability to understand sentences. And of course, you know, due to the damage or the lesion, all right, it has basically affected their ability to go about understanding complex sentence structures. And of course, the most important issue would be the limited studies in Malaysia were basically uh, used or adopted Grotzinki's uh, theory or hypothesis in their study. So if you look at the part highlighted in blue, they are uh, my basic, my theoretical foundation of the study, where I will be looking at this one claim that they made on broca aphasic patients' comprehensibility, particularly when it comes to understanding active sentences and also passive sentences. Also to investigate the employment of the default strategy, also considered as our strategy, which is known as the referential strategy. All right. So uh, Chomsky's 1981 Tita criterion uh, theory uh, will be very much, our principle will be very much relevant to the R strategy, which will eventually be used by the patient. This R strategy actually, or also known as the default strategy, is a strategy where the patients will normally be using, a grammatic patient will normally be using in their sentence comprehension, in which they will be assigning the first entry that they see in the sentence structure as an agent role. So this agent actually is one of the thematic roles that plays an important role in understanding the sentences. So thematic roles, there are various roles, actually agents, team, uh, experience or instruments. So the, the most important role that will be a focus of this study will be the agent role, right? Where, uh, you know, agent here means uh, is considered as the MP that plays a crucial role that is considered as a doer of a specific action. So here, when the patient uses a default strategy, they would want to go about assigning that particular role, which happened to be a doer for that particular MP. So we will see how this employment of default strategy happens and also to investigate whether or not this happens, right, based on the um, performance uh, of, uh, which will be basically be, uh, be indicated by the percentage of, uh, of uh, the percentage obtained in their SPMT tests. So yes, of course, to investigate all of these, I will be using Christensen's 2001 sentence to picture matching test. So if you see the main implication of the findings of the study, you know, basically will eventually affect uh, the ability of understanding these two types of sentences, mainly on active and passive sentences. Why? Because the use of strategy, default strategy, actually during the sentence comprehension of active and passive sentences, it will eventually affect their overall performance so when they use the strategy, it will affect their performance of understanding active and passive sentences. So we will see that in detail when I show you the findings. So these are some of the previous studies on aphasia in Malaysia, all right? And if you look at this study, actually, the focus is mainly on Malay native speakers of, with aphasia. And also it is basically mainly on intervention on having to go about developing some sort of a tool to go about making this group of people to identify or to understand speech block and at the same time to also pre produce speech. All right, so uh, they are limited to study in Malaysia employing Grotzinki's TDH and also Chomsky's Strata Criterion Principle as a theoretical framework involving Malaysian speakers of English. So that is why my study would be very much significant to add literature for this particular field of study. So the methodology, I have basically used a convenience sampling because of the lack of respondents, I have decided to make this study as a case study. So there's only one agramatic patient that I have selected for my study. And this particular patient is selected from the National Association of Stroke uh, of Malaysia. So here, um, it is also considered as nasal, right? Uh, so a comprehension test, Christensen's 2001 sentence to picture matching test was adapted. And if you look at the test, actually, there are a total of eight sets in which that each picture carries a pair of sentences that belong to uh, SVOs, active sentences, and also passive sentences. If you look at the example given here, this will be an example of one of the sets that I basically used in my study. So the first set basically has got to do with uh, the first uh, sentence structure will be active. The girl pushes the boy, the boy pushes the girl. When this sentence is presented to the patient, they will be required to go about pointing out the correct pictures, right? And based on the correctly identified pictures, they are called the overall 
scores will be tabulated. And this applies also for the passive sentences. So these semantically reversible sentences actually has got to do with the uh, movement of the subject, which basically will eventually carry the same meaning to a certain extent where the subjects can go about, uh, the, uh, can, can basically, can be, can be the, the position of the entities can be swapped accordingly with regards where it also shares the similar uh, mean to a certain extent. So this would be the data collection and data analysis process where uh, uh, I presented a two, two pictures semantically neighbor to each other. And then they would, the patient would basically was asked to basically hear and also uh, point out the picture that basically depicts the meaning of the sentences. This, uh, yeah. And then I will basically be able to calculate the overall percentage by looking at the score obtained. All right, which will eventually answer my first research question. And of course, I will be also be looking at how they have basically uh, used the default strategy during the comprehension of this uh, sentence structure by looking at the deep structure and also the surface structure of the sentences. Okay, so this will be the findings of my first research question, where if you look at the table, all right, if you look at the table two, Broca aphasic patient comprehends well for the active sentences. If you look at the score obtained for the active sentences, it is 91%. So as compared to the passive sentences, it was it, it is only 25%. So from these findings, you can clearly uh, say or support the claim made by Grotzinki that they are a good comprehender and a bad comprehender of they are good comprehender of active sentences and bad comprehender of passive sentences. All right. But you look at when you look at the pie chart in figure four and five, this you can definitely look at the trend. So the part highlighted in red, they are the wrongly selected uh, for pictures, where it can be clearly seen that they are very good at comprehending the active sentences. But when you look at the uh, majority part highlighted in red, this has got to do with the ability of comprehending passive sentences. Okay, right. So here, um, this will be my second findings, all right, for the study. If you look at this table, this has got to do with the way on how to go about investigating whether or not they have used the default strategy. So when I said I will be looking at the deep structure and surface structure, the deep structure here is an important structure where it will help readers, uh, learners to go about interpreting the meaning. So deep here basically has got to do with having to deal with the meaning of the sentences itself. So when you look at SVO and OVS, if you look at the respective column, this is the interpretation of the meaning of the sentences. So the boy pushed the girl with regards to the inflection affixes that is being placed at the initial stage, because the focus of this deep structure is merely to look at the meaning. And same goes to OBS, the boy pushed the girl. That is the interpretation of this particular sentence structure, the girl was pushed by the boy. But when you look at the surface structure, it is merely the construction of the sentences. We know that we want to go about saying the action uh, performed by the doer. So we would want to say as in the boy pushes the girl. So when the inflection affixes is being placed at the subject position, it will to a certain extent be moved to be attached to the verb push. So when that, when the inflection affixes moves, automatically the NP, the boy, would also be having some sort of movement. So when there is a movement involved, there will be a trace. If there is a trace, okay, automatically, uh, the broca appreciate patients all right, would no longer be able to identify the trace, but they will be able to know or determine uh, the strategy that they would want to use, which is to appoint the first entity that they see as an agent, which is the doer. Okay, if you look at the SVO, when there is a trace, if you look at the traces are all basically being, uh, being placed in a subject position. Subject position means the position that comes before a word in a sentence structure. So when the so-called traces basically is being placed on the subject position, even when they apply the default strategy indeed, all right, it will automatically uh, allow them to comprehend the sentence structure correctly. All right, and of course they won't have issues understanding the sentence structures. All right, but whereas this situation is totally different when they basically understand OVS, which is the passive sentences. So when there is a movement of sentences, as in the girl was pushed by the boy, but the sentence meaning is the boy was the one who basically pushed the girl. When there is a movement of subject to object position and object to subject position, the trace basically can be evident in both places as in on the subject position and also the object position. Here, the matter here, 
they have used the, the, the patient basically used the default strategy, which is to assign the agent role. That is the default strategy. When they assign the agent role where they would automatically want to go about thinking that the first NP is the doer. So when that happens, automatically for the understanding the passage of passive sentences, they will basically commit a mistake and it, this will eventually make them to confuse and be and they will be basically making some sort of a guessing. How this guessing uh, process happens here is that in language, right? And when there is a sentence structure, it shouldn't be assignment of two agents in one clause. So when there is a two agent, there will be a confusion clause. And this particular pa passive sentence structure is considered as a complex one because there is an additional phrase, uh, prepositional phrase, which attached by the word by. And of course, the verb here plays an important role to go about assigning the second role for the NP. So when that happens, if you see the word, the verb here automatically assigns agents to the boy. So when it assigns agent, which is the doer, and also when the usage of default strategy by the broker official as agent as the first NP, automatically the confusion arises. So when there is a confusion, the broker official patient will need to go about identifying the real agent. And when they want to go about identifying the real agent, this is where they would want to go about simply guessing. So if you look at the percentage obtained for passive sentences, it was only 25%. And both the attempts, they only got a very, very little points you know, for the understanding of passive sentence. It is due to the fact that the confusion that arised during the sentence process, comprehension process, okay, because of the uh, assignment of agent, the default strategy, and also the assignment of agent by the verb itself in the sentence structure. So if you see, um, I just wanted to wrap this up because I have already explained this in the table and also in the pie chart before. So this can be clearly seen that uh, the patient has somehow uh, you know, used the default strategy to make themselves understand better for this, uh, you know, and, and particularly for active and also passive sentences. So when it comes to passive, you know, one important thing that I basically can see here is that the traces are basically are left in the subject position. So the criteria here is that the subject position is the first initial position in a sentence structure. So when they assign the default strategy, which is to assign agent, which is the doer for that NP, automatically, even when they guess, their guessing would basically turn up correct because the assignment of agent, and at the same time, they would basically understand the structure itself because the lack of uh, you know, because this, the construction of sentences is quite simple. As for passive, all right, the traces will be deleted. The traces are in two places and also it is not visible for the theta assignment. And of course, when they use the so-called the default strategy, which is to assign an agent in a non-thematic position, which is wrong, by right, the girl is supposed to be uh, known as the team, not agent. So when that happens, two agents will be presented in the sentence structure. When there is a two agent already further emphasized that it is not possible. When there are two agents, confusion would arise. And this is where the patient would want to go about guessing because the patient would have to go about identifying the real agent, right? So these findings actually uh, provide a way to go about investigating the strategy that they have used automatically. You know, we can definitely make a conclusion here that when we presented the complex sentences to block our fishing patient, they will have the strategy, which is to guess. So most of the time, they will be merely guessing whenever you use your complex sentence structures to this type of group. So here, the default strategy plays an important role because this is where basically it helped us to come with such, uh, such findings where they will basically be guessing most of the uh, sentences you know, especially when it is presented in a very complex manner. So they will be using the default strategy, which is also known as the R strategy or the agent first strategy. All right. So another implication here is that we will basically also understand the guessing pattern. So when you present it, when you present basic sentence structures or you say something in a very simple manner to broker a patient, they will also, they will understand you in a very quick manner. But if there is a usage of different complex structures to this group of people, they will have confusion and it will basically lead to the process of guessing the so-called intention and the intended message of the utterances or sentences presented to them, right? So to sum up, the result of this study revealed that broker efficient patient 
in this study has been using the default strategy, which is the R strategy during the active and passive sentences. And that is why due to the usage, the patient is considered as a good comprehender and active sentences and a bad comprehender of passive sentences. These findings has eventually supported the account of Grotzinki's trace-based account that consists of the two main claims. They are known as Grotzinki's 1990 trace tradition hypothesis and the default strategy, which is known as the R strategy. Thank you so much for listening. That is all for my presentation today.